discussion is there are quite many myths because it's a sort of an intricate topics even for the postgraduates. So there are quite many myths that are prevalent about retinopathy of prematurity, and we shall be mixing them one by one. To begin with, the first myth is often that it's an unimportant test. Whenever we sometimes propose to the pediatricians, they often say that, uh, yeah, uh, like uh, I know about ROP testing, but we don't usually uh, do it because, uh, the, because the second myth, which is again very prevalent is mine is in level two NICU practice. The level three people probably need it more than me. So my patients don't need ROP checkup. So why should I um, order the test? Like this particular baby, if you see, this was the one who initiated me to uh, for uh, ROP screening. This baby, as you can see, has squint in both eyes. There is esotropia in both the eyes. That is secondary to the retinal detachment which she has sustained. Now, uh, she's already, uh, when I saw her first, she was about three months of age and now about nine months of age. Like the, page, uh, the parents had uh, put in huge volumes of money behind saving her life after she was born and uh, later, uh, what happened was she developed ROP and uh, like she lost both her eyes. Now even with the treatment, even with the surgery, the results are not so uh, like uh, they are not so great after the surgery also. So it is most important that ROP be screened and treated in time. Also most aggressive posterior ROP in practical uh, scenario have been noted in uh, the care uh, in the level 2 NICU care because uh, there is no uh, like a, a regular monitoring of the oxygen the amount of uh, level of care is not so great hence it is important that even after surgery the results are not great so it is also more together altogether more important that the patients get treatment in time because before the visual prognosis becomes grave the probability of the ROP decreases with the increasing gestational age, but again it doesn't go away. So even a near term infant who is at risk, the risk factors which we just saw may have an ROP. So please screen even the near term infants who are at risk. The criteria are, I'll just try and repeat them, less than 34 weeks or the birth weight with less than 2000 grams. The 30 weaker baby should be screened earlier, that is within 20 days of life preferably. These are said by Dr. Subhadra Jalali who has done a very uh, like a great amount of work for ROP. Even a near term infant who has sepsis or acute respiratory distress syndrome or blood transfusion. The multiple pregnancies are again become a risk factor, one baby is, has uh, been quite healthy and the other baby is a weakling and that probably be, be, may go for an ROP. It is important to screen both the babies. So it's one of the most important tests and all preterms or near term infants with risk factors are potential candidates for ROP testing. Third myth again which is very common is ROP is a routine test. It's not a routine eye examination as we do in torchlight. Like uh, many uh, times we uh, we ask the parents that have you been screened for ROP? Have you been uh, uh, have you undergone this test called ROP testing? Yeah, we have been we have been showing to our ophthalmologist in his screen torchlight uh, on torchlight. But then this, this is not a test to be done on torchlight, as we know that uh, ROP is a disease of peripheral retina, and direct ophthalmoscope can view only a segment of the peripheral retina. That is less than thirty percent of the retina is seen by direct ophthalmoscope even with the best efforts. Well, the ROP happens in extreme periphery to begin with and by the time it involves the center, it's probably too late. So uh, please uh, like screen only with indirect ophthalmoscope. These babies have a uh, very, uh, like these are weaklings, they, they, they are so uh, soft and so tiny, so please don't practice learning indirect ophthalmoscopy on these babies. This is probably not meant for especially the junior residents. Those who have had seen like hundreds and thousands of uh, adult cases may go for ROP testing. So preferably done by faculty members. 
specialized speculum are necessary to put these are uh, specially designed speculum for premature kids even the infant speculum is found to be too large for rop baby so please don't attempt to jut open the eye and uh, look it forcibly because as i said these are very fragile babies so specialized procedure to be best done by an expert <clears throat> the diagnosis of rop often uh, denotes a grave visual prognosis more often uh, the pediatricians refrain from uh, like ordering the test or uh, whenever they order the test what happens is uh, once the rop is detected they become uh, like a bit jittery that you know rop is there and this baby might go blind not all cases are so grave and as we know it forms a spectrum of the disease there are five stages of the disease and the lower stage like the like the one in stage 1 or stage 2 that is ridge may not altogether be uh, that harmful for the vision sight but yes they are a matter of concern especially depending upon the location stage 3 definitely is the one that is fibrovascular proliferation when the new vessels the new vascularization starts the immaturity now sends out uh, the growth factors for the development of the ocular neovascularization and they tend to uh, lead uh, the this hypervascular fronts they tend to grow into the vitreous and then this uh, fronts are the ones which create the problem but again stage 3 in itself doesn't become an indication for treatment the plus disease is what we call as there are four criteria for plus disease any of the criteria should be present for labeling one can remember it by the mnemonic phpv phpv is a different disease altogether but then this is how i remember it non dilating pupil is the first so again here a word of caution is sometimes uh, what happens is the uh, the ophthalmologist or ophthalmol ophthalmic resident is given a call and uh, the pupil is not dilated well despite putting the eye drops so please don't shout at your uh, uh, pediatrician colleague that you have not dilated the baby the baby there are chances that if the dilatation drops were put well the baby had on um, like a uh, plus disease and the pupil is not dilating their form so please look carefully to the iris and if you find that there are any signs of iris neovascularization it is highly likely that the baby has a plus disease i would say put the drops three times if needed four times but not more a vitreous hemorrhage again is a sign of a plus disease a vitreous haze you cannot see the retina very clearly it might be again a sign of a plus disease provided of course the lens and other ocular structures are normal and a dilated and tortuous blood vessels here you can see the, the level is not so much tortuous it is not so much pronounced but again if uh, it becomes an indication that the a baby would require a treatment a partial retinal detachment definitely would require uh, attention by a vitreoretinal surgeon because here again if the macula is not involved the chances are that the vision would be great if it is detected and treated in time however a total retinal detachment usually uh, results and the most of the babies who come at a later age say 3 months of age or 4 months of age or beyond with a diagnosis of rop usually have this total retinal detachment and they come with a white pupil reflex so if uh, if there is a premature baby and if the pupil has turned white then there are like you can reasonably say that uh, total retinal detachment has happened and the chances of visual prognosis are really not great however white reflex can or leukocoria as we know as can develop due to other causes such as pediatric cataract so just to summarize stage 1 is line and it's a good rop stage again stage 2 is what we known as ridge is again a good rop stage the bad rop stage is the stage 3 that is fibrovascular proliferation stage 4 is partial retinal detachment it's an ugly rop stage and stage 5 is total rd that is again an ugly rop stage in short rop is the most common preventable cause of blindness if diagnosed in time and so we can prevent the disease from progressing provided we diagnose it in time another very common myth which we 
come across is rop is a single time testing most of all what happens is pediatricians do order rop testing especially if uh, the baby uh, is put in the nicu but uh, whenever the follow up side wise probably they are not compliant enough the reason behind uh, uh, the reason why we need a uh, frequent rop testing is the retinal maturity usually uh, the baby say suppose it's a 28 weeker baby and the ophthalmologist sees at 32 weeks the retinal development has not completed by then so usually we uh, the retinal development is uh, seen here when we first see so this much retina is still avascular it is this avascular retina that predisposes to rop so again if the baby is no rop on the initial visit there are chances that the baby may develop rop on, uh, thereafter so until the retina is fully vascularized until or acerata please uh the baby should be kept under follow up as we discuss vegf and especially vegf and the platelet derived growth factor there are several growth factors which are involved but these are the two main growth factors the hyperoxia followed by hypoxia is what leads to the development of the neovascularization in this babies <laughs> this is again how the leaky the blood vessels ooze uh, fluid and the blood and then uh, this undergoes fibrosis and pulls the retina usually how do we manage the case of rop just just a broad guidelines so once we see the baby there is no rop or there is an rop so let us take of the uh, scenario where there is rop so it might be in stage 4 or 5 which would definitely require a vitrectomy surgery and should be best left to a vitreoretinal surgeon vitreoretinal surgery uh, involves uh, cutting off the membranes and the fibrous tissue which are there in the um, vitreous again a lot of retinotomy is done as we saw earlier and it would uh, like uh, reattaching the retina once it has displaced is quite a tough job such surgeries are done only in the leading eye institutes in the country and probably uh, the babies ought to be referred there the cost of the surgery is again also very high if the baby once we saw and is in stage 1 2 or 3 it is here where the uh, the diagnostic dilemma comes in so one should ask is there any plus disease ask yourself what is the location of the disease and how many clock hour involvement is there once you have decided upon you can then grade the disease accordingly this is how what this is another terminology what we call as threshold disease which will be seen thereafter but in general a threshold disease is one which requires treatment so the base upon the plus disease the location and the clock hours involved we classify it into the pre threshold and the threshold so this is how i remember is spencer whenever you are ask for a classification of rop just ask uh, remember this mnemonic spencer that is the stage of the disease whether it has plus or not the extent again if there is no rop a note should be made for whether the uh, the retinal vascularization is normal or not and what till what level the normal vas retinal vascularization has reached the zone and whether there are any extra findings that is cataract or glaucoma or any other other ocular findings that you might notice along with it the finally the note should be made whether the retina is mature or not only after this spencer is completed you can uh, complete your report on rop routinely ophthalmologists are in habit of writing like no rop is present but this is this won't be considered as a complete and clinically complete report so what is a threshold rop again we have mnemonic so for that this is 1 2 3 4 5 there is no 6 7 but 8 so a threshold rop is one which has a disease in zone 1 or disease in zone 2 which is in stage 3 and which has any of the four criteria of plus disease what we just saw that is a non dilating pupil 
vitreous hemorrhage, vitreous haze, or dilated and tortuous or cheap blood, blood vessels. Again, that is not all. It ought to be a 5 continuous clock hours to make it a threshold or 8 continuous clock hours if it is like not all along the retina. So a threshold ROP is one which requires treatment with laser and or avastin. The role of avastin is again role of avastin is again controversial and uh, it is mainly advocated for a very aggressive posterior ROP where one has to burn quite much of the retina. We do have a large scale clinical study that is beat ROP study and which has uh, effectively uh, recommended the treatment for stage 3 plus ROP in zone 1 that is very aggressive posterior ROP what we call where otherwise also the eyes would have got blinded even if we treated with laser or without laser. So here the, the risk benefit ratio of the treatment is quite good. So that is why we uh, treat it with the help of Viva Sumer along with laser. The laser therapy as we know is currently gold standard against which the other treatments are compared. The laser therapy involves the burning of the avascular retina so that the risk factors for ROP, the VEGF load, in short what we are decreasing is the VEGF load. We put laser spots onto the entire avascular retina and this is how the retina gets scared. The scared retina won't work. The, the patient would have a, a tunnel vision at the end of the day. But again, this is good because we are saving the central vision which is important for reading, writing, recognizing faces and the other purposes. First, they recommended that the threshold ROP is the one which needs to be treatment, uh, treated. But again, then they saw that there were certain babies who again got blind even uh, the in the period when they were classified as pre-threshold. So the pre-threshold after a study was divided into the high risk group and the low risk group. The high risk group is one again which would require treatment. The low risk group can be effectively watched and wait. The treatment remains the same for the high risk group, laser plus or minus sevastin. The low risk group needs frequent follow up. So whom do we follow? The stage zone 2 or stage like stage 3 in zone 2 with no plus because there is no plus disease it doesn't classify into zone 2 so we follow them up. Zone 1, stage 1 or stage 2 and no plus we can follow them but we need to follow them very closely so this babies need to be called to your setup probably if they are discharged and seen. Again all these babies those who have had a very immature retina that is zone 1 vascularization even if they don't have ROP, they need to be seen time and again, that is every two weeks. A regressing ROP, that is in zone 1. ROP though it is regressing, but then we need to follow up the, whether it is again coming back or not. Zone 2 in stage 2 need to be followed up closely. We can wait and watch for the babies who have had immature vascularization in zone 2 and who had no ROP. Those who have had zone 3 ROP and it is in regressing phase and again stage 1 or 2 ROP which is in zone 3. These are the safe babies and they are dicey babies. They might go downhill and develop a florid ROP or may not uh, may come out of the ROP phase and develop a normal retinal vascularization. Then some babies ought to be followed up more closely. So in short. <coughs> Once we have ROP, the situation is to determine whether the baby needs treatment or not. But one of the most common myths is when the baby has no ROP to uh, say him that he is ROP free and then not to follow the, pa the patient. The ROP, even if the baby doesn't have ROP, he might have an immature retina and these babies would require a follow up very frequently. The mature retina babies need to be followed up 
for ROPC equally, which probably very few people do. So as we said, just to summarize, the normal intrauterine growth tends to uh, is uh, like incomplete when the baby is out, say by 20, 22, 28 weeks or 32 weeks of age. The ROP goes on developing progressively. First, when the baby is in the um, NICU, there is an increased oxygen which is given. These are the theories which are proposed. And there is low VEGF load because there is high oxygen. Then when the oxygen is withdrawn, the VEGF load increases and there is an increase in the neovascularization which could lead to a very aggressive ROP that is stage 4 or 5. When this, when the time period between this and this is very short, we call it as the rush disease. Stage 3 ROP is the one where we can treat it effectively. The risk benefit ratio of the treatments are the best and we can save the sight of the baby. It might be treated either with cryotherapy, which is not quite much in vogue, but again, if there is nothing like in the third world countries where there is nothing, then the cryotherapy is better than the laser therapy. Otherwise, laser therapy is the gold standard. So here is usually where the ophthalmologists are summoned for the first ROP screening and here the, image, the retina is not mature. So the babies ought to be followed at least one month after the first initial screening and then the checkups. And the subsequent checkups depends upon the findings. So what are the ROP sequel what we told? Even if the baby has had ROP or the baby did not have ROP, still there are chances that the babies would require, uh, would uh, may have refractive error or squint or babies might have, uh, might develop cataract or may tend to have glaucoma. In short, ROP is a lifelong disease. The babies would require follow-up irrespective of their ROP status every three monthly for the first year of age and then uh, once a year thereafter. Coming to again very common myth is ROP examination is done in general anesthesia. There uh, because uh, mainly because uh, not many ophthalmologists are trained in ROP work, they tend to numb, uh, like quieten the baby and the general anesthesia which again puts the baby at very high risk. ROP baby in the hands of an expert is usually done and topical anesthesia and a simple parakine eye drops would suffice to uh, like uh, would allow the babies to put the wire speculum. There are some advocates who say that no anesthesia is required but then again I feel that without anesthesia the baby would feel quite much of a discomfort than the ones which they use anesthesia. Again a very common myth is that ROP examination is best in OPD. As we know, our OPD is full of organisms and these are very fragile babies. So whenever they send the babies to us, ophthalmologists, the, there are very high chances that they might capture infection or any of the contagions that we have in our OPD. This best, uh, the first uh, ROP checkup is best done before the baby is discharged from the NICU. There are two reasons. Number one is infection, as we know as these babies are high-risk babies. The number two is the social thing. The, the, the sensitivity of the parents is highest when uh, the baby is in the NICU. You order any of the tests, they will comply to it and make it sure that uh, the baby undergoes the test. Once the baby is discharged from the NICU after say staying about a month or so, the uh, social, the parents feel that uh, like, uh, you know, they feel relieved and they are so overjoyed that they tend to ignore the eye problem, which then can develop into stage four or five disease. So this is the practical scenario of the situation. Also, the uh, NICU does have facilities for resuscitation, which we do not have. We don't have the expertise for resuscitating the baby. So, uh, should this baby, there are chances that the baby while examination might go into gasping, might uh, develop uh, tachycardia or bradycardia and would require neonatal support. So, again, this becomes an indication for uh, the testing in the NICU. Again, a very common belief is that ROP checkup is costly. Uh, as we said, that the ROP surgeries are done only in the premium centers, and approximately even in the like non-profitable organization, the the, amount, the cost of surgery is very high. Given the chances that the baby is going to be blind for its lifelong, 
like any baby who survives now has a life expectancy of at least 80 to 90 years now if the baby is going to be blind at uh, for his or her entire lifetime ROP uh, examination is definitely not cost you screening and time can prevent the vision I would rather put it as it is the one of the most cost effective tests for any baby Again, if you Google ROP testing, you find that quite many uh, uh, scenarios have happened where uh, somebody forgot to uh, order ROP test or somebody did not uh, carry it out carefully and uh, there are uh, chances that uh, the, uh, the report uh, was not carried out and the baby become blind. So it, in this uh, current age, it is wise to be on the safer side and ROP, order ROP testing and uh, make sure not not only for the uh, being legally protected but again uh, also important for the baby's vision again as i said that i have initiated a prime program wherein uh, like the retinal specialist himself goes to the ROP, uh, the, the the neonatal ICU and screens the baby. So there are there is little requirement for the neonatologist to send across the patient while it is intubated or uh, like discharged from the ICU. This way we can give a better life to the babies with good vision. Also, the vastin or bivastisumab can again be uh, administered in the ICU itself. And I see, uh, NIC is as clean as our hospital OT. So, like, even rather, I would say put it as they are more keen and concerned about the cleanliness hygiene. Also, laser photocoagulation can be done through the uh, NICU itself. So, if the baby has a very severe ROP and would require photocoagulation, you can carry the green laser all along with you to the NICU and treat it there itself. Baby did not uh, to be carried out of the NICU with, along with all these tubes.